Welcome to Library Salad. Today's episode is Baking Bread and it is brought to you by the Monroeville Public Library. Hi, I'm Alice and with Library Salad we're taking a theme, tossing around some ideas, but because we're baking bread today it's going to be more like kneading things around. Because of everybody staying home more often now, people are looking to start new hobbies, etc. And one of the main things that people are doing is they're baking bread. So we're going to be doing two types of bread today. Uh, the first one, which is our bonus word, is challah bread. You may see most often the challah bread is grated, but during things like um, holidays such as Rosh Hashanah, even Jewish New Year, it's made into a round bread because that's a symbol um, the circle of life. So if this doesn't work out for you, you can just make it a round circle and have a good time. But we're going to do a quick braiding. I have never braided bread before. I'm telling you that right. I haven't made hala, but let's just try it. What's what's going to happen? Um, my understanding is just like braiding hair. So for those of you who have done that, I mean, I have at least done French braids. It's simply, although usually tighter, it's just bringing each one, the side ones, into the middle. So if we can do that, let's try doing this. Now, it said that each one is divided, the dough that was made is divided into three equal pieces. If you want to do six pieces, check that out on um, the internet. Three pieces, 16 inches long, which happens to be the length of this. And as we're starting, in order to sort of anchor it, both bringing it the ends together like that, and as we move these over, it's now starting to attach itself. All right, we're bringing, and we can do it as almost like a little song because if we take and move this over a little bit. We're taking the left and we're moving it to the middle, okay, between these two. So then if we've just taken the left one, we now have to take the right one over and bringing that to the middle. So if we've got the right one was the last one we did, we're now going to bring this one over. Let's try to tighten this a little bit more. So left came over. What's the next one? We're bringing the right one over. And for a couple more, bringing this, keeping this in line. Coming once over here, once over there, and then at, because at both ends we're going to bring it over and then be tucking it under like that. Same with this, and that's going to come over. And I don't think that's bad for the first time ever. And what's going to happen next is this is going to have to rise again. And then we're going to be baking it at the end of this episode. I'm going to show you the results of that. And just to let you know, the recipes are going to be on as a link to the Facebook episode that you're watching. Stay tuned. And we're back. Look at how well this browned and came out. Can't wait to just cut a slice on this. Still slightly, slightly warm. And there we go. Take a quick little bite. That's very good. That's very good. And now on to the next bread. Hala. And with many people home and doing a lot of baking now, it's becoming very difficult to actually find yeast. But what we're gonna be doing now is a no yeast peanut butter bread. This type of bread really isn't the kind that you use for sandwiches. It's more like a banana bread. And you can find the recipes on the link that is on the Facebook post for this episode. Now, a bonus word for today is mise en place. That means putting in place. 
You may see when you watch a lot of the cooking shows that they'll actually have all of the ingredients lined out. The chefs will actually do this in their own home. Why? Because of the fact that by putting it in place like this, it's going to, when you get finish putting in one ingredient, instead of saying, oh, I have to get the next ingredient, if you were to stop the action, that wouldn't really work for the flow of everything. And by this way, you will know that you've put everything in that you're supposed to be. Because how many times do people suddenly say, you taste, you say, it doesn't taste right, I forgot something. This is gonna help you with that. Now, but having your, um, the recipe right up here does make it a lot easier. And this recipe is actually so simple that for the directions, there's just 10 sentences in that. And simple list of ingredients. Now, what I've done is I've already taken care of that first paragraph because I've taken my loaf pan, I've buttered it, I've put in parchment paper, and this goes up just to the uh, shorter size because that's what's gonna end up lifting it out. If you haven't been using parchment paper, you should definitely try it. It's one of the things where you say, how did I live without it? How did I live without it? That's what I've been asking myself, thank you. Okay, so, so far in the recipe, I just finished combining the um, milk and the peanut butter. It said to whisk it. I started whisking it. It didn't look pretty, so it wasn't pretty. It wasn't easy, it wasn't happening. So what I did was I just went to the uh, tried and true. Now, the next thing up is I am putting this back down. I'm going to be adding the flour. Just another should hit that when you add it, you're not looking for the measurement up here. You're going to be going down to be able to see a better, more precise measurement on that. Uh, we're going to be starting off low. Because even though you probably get a little bit of kickback with the flour, it's just easier this way. Blend, blend it a little bit. Add a little more. Have your water ready in the sink. Next up is going to be the sugar. See how easy this is with the music glass? Alright, next is the baking powder. This actually requires a lot of baking powder. I was very surprised. Kosher sugars. I know, I know if this is a new thing, it's a new recipe, new thing. but kosher salt. Salts make a difference. If it's calling for the kosher, try to make sure that you've got that. Alright, we're just going to give it, I'm just going to stop, make sure that everything's up from the bottom, everything's been taken off of the sides, it is, and then this is just asking for it to be combined. So we don't want to go too much if it's just asking for combined, as opposed to mix very well. It then says whoop, to actually fold in the peanut butter chips. I had to go to two stores to find the peanut butter chips. It used it's it was difficult to find, but um, one of the reviews on this recipe said that um, they substituted butterscotch chips. So we're going to go like this, toss it in. By putting, as you're doing this, by putting things into the actual uh, sink with some soapy water on it, that's going to be the uh, ability to, when you go to actually do your dishes, um, nothing's going to be sticking. It's going to be an easier way to get it in. According to directions, half of this is going to get in first. After that, we're going to be putting a layer of chocolate and then the rest of the mixture on top of that. So, we're going to put one, two, 
two, maybe two and a half. This is the same way that if you're doing a layer cake, when you want to know if you've got it um, equally distributed, you'll be able to count, put one ladle in, one ladle, two, two, three, three. And that's going to give you a little bit um, easier time of getting both of the layers a little bit even. I mean, here this will make as much of a difference, but when talking layer cake, you like those different layers to be a little bit level. All right, so we've got this in. I have got just a regular big block of the chocolate in the whole mise en place. I've got this open and ready to go. And watch how this fits. This actually works extremely well. It just goes down like that and centered. And then we take the rest of the mixture, put that in, press that down just like this. And I've got the oven ready because you're starting with just when you're doing your mise en place, um, get your oven preheating so that as soon as your batter is ready, you can then Put it right in because the batter really shouldn't sit it should just be able to go we'll even out on that and we're going to put it in and with the magic of video here we are the bread is all done and take a look at this the chips melted that nice layer of chocolate in between is now even so gooey so I would say success on that one. And if you want to check out some other breads or any other foods from around the world, go to our website. And once you're on the website, you're going to hit the research button. First database that comes up is A to Z World Food. You're going to put in your library card number. If you don't have a library card on that main website, it's going to be a link to get one. Once you put in the library card number, Search for focaccia or anything you want. Hope you had a great time and good luck with yours.